given how important this issue is and given how dangerous this pandemic is, how do you begin to approach the fact that, how do you communicate that? How do you deal with that? How do you relate with that? Or, or is your position just, this is too important, pandemic can deal, is gonna have to just wait? The fact that people are out there willing to risk their lives um, in terms of the pandemic, in ter- a, a, a pandemic that kills because you're in contact with people, that connection, closeness is dangerous. And yet it's that connection and it's that closeness and it's that solidarity that is driving this conversation, is driving change and is driving reform. So uh, to your question, I think it means that people feel it is that important that they really are, especially in the the U.S. I believe, you know, we're we're inching at the 115,000 have died, Mark, and people are still taking to the streets and the coronavirus itself it's like this this parallel virus that we're dealing with um at the same time and it's just a reminder of the inequalities that i think everybody collectively is tired of so you know it's scary i mean to a certain extent it it speaks to the righteousness i would believe of, of the cause that people are willing to you know march for march in honor of a man or justice for a man who couldn't breathe in an environment where we have a virus that will rob you of your breath. So do you feel, do you feel now with what's happening in the country and around the world right now that priorities are actually changing and changing in a way that you would consider to be appropriate? Yeah. I mean, you know, as we speak today, um, we're all reeling from the, the news of uh, Rashard Brooks, the murder in, in Atlanta. And I think that just renewed the frustration, renewed the anger. But you know what, you know, Ian, you asked me how I feel. I'm angry, you know, like, I think, I think I wish it didn't have to be that a man, I would say, gets tortured to death for eight minutes on film for us to believe that this is a problem and that anti-blackness in this country is pervasive um, and it's like oxygen. You don't, you, you, it's in the air. You don't even notice it, but we're all breathing it, right? And so I, I feel, you know, I, I'm, I'm glad that the burden is shared in terms of those conversations and in terms of, you know, white people, non-black people talking to other white people and non-black people about the, about race, about racism. 